so, so crazy. And you know, this is the place where Jill and Aisha lay it down, uh, where they make people pee their pants. Where they, make... <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where they just, we just have a lot of fun. And again, just to repeat, Dr. Vibe here, host and producer, award winning Dr. Vibe show. Ladies, let's get the thing started. So, the way we're going to go through last night's debate is there were debate topics and Aisha and Jill are going to give their commentary on how both 45 and Joe Biden handled them. And as always, people, please feel free to add your comments. So the first topic from last night's debate was all about fighting COVID-19. Mm. Who wants to hang into that first? I'll jump in. Um, that should have been it. There should have been just a debate about COVID, period, because you can't really focus on anything else going on in this country until we deal with the COVID situation. We can't deal with economy, education, um, jobs, any, any, anything until we deal with the COVID situation. And Donald Trump just can't bring himself to deal with it. He can't bring himself to um, mention the 220,000 people that died. He always says more could have died. He brought that up last night, that millions more could have died. Um, the part where he said we're living with it and Joe Biden had to say, well, no, we're dying with it. What was, I thought, a pivotal point in that discussion. Um, then there were the lies. Apparently he lied more last night than he did in the first debate and just the rounding the curve um and um make no mistake if you have covid um it's going to become a pre-existing condition um and the fact that they want to take the health care away is something that needs to be on your mind. It's going to be something like, you know, having diabetes or high blood pressure because people are going to have lasting symptoms from this. Um, I The way that Donald Trump wanted to pull away from the COVID discussion, at this point, the election is basically over. COVID is going to kill his campaign. It has killed his campaign. Um, what he didn't get advice in doing, or at least didn't listen to campaign strategists, um, he should have leaned into it. Like the part that got me was when um, Kristen Welker asked him, do you even take responsibility for it? And he said, yes, I do. China shouldn't have done it. I know, right? <laughs> China, it's that China's fault. It's like, wait, that's not taking responsibility. That's passing the buck. That's putting the blame on someone else. Um, I think on COVID, Joe Biden wins that discussion because he has so much more to say about it. And granted, people are like, you know, it, it always boggles my mind how Trump will say to him, well, why haven't you done anything? He's not in an elected position. He's not. He's citizen Biden right now. You know, and also, too, COVID wasn't a thing when they were in office, but he did bring up the H1N1. Again, the the Obama-Biden administration handled that. That's how they came up with that Office of Infectious Diseases and um, Pandemics that Trump dismantled. And so um, I thought that the discussion of COVID was one that um, it, it was a smart, I, I think, conversation topic for Kristen Welker to open the um, discussion with, the debate with. I thought that Joe Biden obviously is more masterfully um, a um, politician on that. You know, uh, Trump kept calling him a politician, saying, you're a politician, you're a politician. Well, guess what? He's a skillful politician, obviously, because he he had he had a plan. He's he stepped out of plan. Here we are four years later, nine months into this pandemic. Trump still doesn't have a plan except to say we're rounding the curve. Mm -hmm. Jill, I, I agree with Aisha on this. I think that 
definitely you can see what's needed in such a crisis as COVID. The wrong person to have handling this is Donald Trump. He's too impulsive. He doesn't have the attention span. He has no empathy. He, um, it, it's, he's the worst kind. He's, he's the worst kind of person considering that he got it. It's like he's just out of touch. You would think that you would even be more, have some compassion than he doesn't. And then to say he's gonna have this healthcare situation, there were a few times where Joe cornered him a little with, okay, so where's the healthcare? And then he goes, we're working on it. Then it's like, well, we have it. And he's like, well, what did you mean? You said you were work. you said you had it. Now you're working on it. So it's just too all over the place. And this is such a serious situation because people have lost their companies, their jobs, their their health insurance, and he was going on about everybody's 401k and how you'll get health care. And Joe wants to get rid of the private health care, and that's not true. But even if it, you know, the reality is that I personally can't afford private health care and having a pre existing condition. You know, Trump speaks and only for the well, the wealthy, basically. He doesn't have any idea of what the people, real people, how they're living, what they're doing. I mean, talk about somebody with a golden spoon in their mouth and he's just completely out of touch. He mm -hmm. let COVID go. He wants to con keep trying to corner Joe on this issue of he, he that uh, he disagreed with him when he shut down the country. But that wasn't, that he never did, number one. He didn't say, oh, this is gonna ruin you know, the economy. Joe never said that. Um, the craziest thing is when Trump opened up that can of worms, then Joe went back into, but you knew in January. And now, and you've said since then that, you know, you didn't want people to panic. You know, there's tapes of this, there's recordings. And it's just kind of like watching somebody keep up their lie and you know it just made me start thinking that the more elaborate somebody's details or when you ask them a straight question and this goes across the board when it's too elaborate and too with little sidebars too many of those it tends to be a lie and i think we really got to see trump exposed on those issues completely naked and it was like dude can you keep up with your lie because you know, he's trying to just keep running the same thing over and over, only this time, only this time, Joe had the comeback each time because we kind of know what the standard responses are going to be, which is why he jumped into other topics under COVID that weren't even a part of it. That's what Trump always does to deflect, he'll bring in something else. Like you're wearing, you know, Nikes, you know, that's just, how he is, but the reality is that we will not be able to see through the next four years with COVID with Trump at the helm. We will have a failing, really failing economy. And uh, Wall Street, I think, is inclined to agree with this. Everybody's inclined, doctors, medical professionals. Trump is out of his depth. I mean, calling Dr. Fauci an idiot which he has, there are many times you'll go and turn on something else and you'll go, I never said that. It's just enough already. There will be many more people dying today. There was a woman in Illinois, she's the head of the Department of Health, and she was in tears while she was giving out the rundown of how many people were infected. It's breaking our backs. And anybody it breaks who has a heart or really gives a damn about the people and the citizens in their communities. So we're really starting to see the cream separate from the citrus here. And, uh, and to say that we have to learn how to live with it, but then on the other hand, say we have to protect our elders. I don't think Trump realizes he's elderly. He's old. <laughs> he's freaking old. Who the hell is he? If he really had it, because it, it, it just defies my logic that anyone would come out of an illness and not have it. But OK, we'll go with the premise that he did. 
it, it's and to say that children and his son Baron didn't well Baron probably got the same treatment just like he did right so he's so out of touch and the only reason he needs pedestrian you know mouthpieces to support him is just that he doesn't know anything about he's like the king in the in the castle that doesn't even know about the squalor that his people are and the conditions people are living in 401k if i if has he looked at mine i mean mm. for real it's like dude i don't have a bank account in china let, let let me just jump in here about the whole COVID conversation. It's just very interesting that he, for many months, has said we're going to have something health around plan. the corner. Mm -hmm. He's been saying and, that since 2017. Yeah, now. That, that's regard, he's he's been saying that about the health plan. He's been saying mm -hmm. about the COVID remedy. I don't see any. And plus, interesting enough, there's still no stimulus plan. Why isn't he? You know what he, I. I was always told that he's the deal maker from his days in business. Nothing's happening. More people, more people are dying, and like he, he doesn't. It's coming. It's it's going to be over soon. It's going to be over soon. Okay, why can't you pin on a date? He's a sociopath. He doesn't care, and that is what's so interesting. This is a person who they said was berating his own father when he had dementia like this is a, a really messed up human being that well, to say people have to live with this it's like but he's put no measures in place joe laid out like schools and and he put nothing in order how are you going to live with it when basically he wants everybody to snap at his at his disposal and go back to work like normal is he out of his mind well, yeah, he is, because the thing of it is that he doesn't understand. He doesn't even understand COVID because he keeps saying the same thing over again. It drives me nuts. I want to beat his head every time he says it that, oh, the more testing we do, the more cases we have. It's not true. We, mm -hmm. The more testing we do, the more cases we Find. It doesn't mean that if you stop testing, people stop getting it and stop spreading it. Um, imagine if we didn't do testing. Imagine how many more people would die. Imagine how many more people would have it and, and it, how the rate at which it would spread. Because we wouldn't know to wear the masks. We wouldn't know to social distance. Um, and Jill, to your point, he thinks people are as stupid as he is. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And so he's right. trying to, he's using the same tactics that he does. Like, for example, he, he tries to compensate for his own stupidity. So he, he, he uses those same tactics on himself. Imagine what it's like. He is the, he, in every room that he sits in, there's all these experts with all these degrees and all these areas of expertise. And he's the dumbest person sitting in the room. And True. He knows, I mean, and he, he knows it. He knows that. But here's the other thing. He tries to pride himself on being like some general saying, you know, I get the vibe. Buckle up. We're, he He's tried to compare himself to Winston Churchill a few times. So we're going to muddle. We're going to get through this. But here's the difference. There's no no general that I've ever heard of. And there might be some ludicrous, crazy one who's like, yeah, let's all go run right off the cliff. But that would put all of your men in harm's way. You, mm -hmm. That's just not proper thinking. What more of this keeps revealing to me is that Trump is only as good as the people who worked for his father. Trump was never the businessman. It was his dad. And hey. the truth is we're seeing that right now. Let's stick on. So, anything else we want you ladies want to chat about in it regards how 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 COVID was handled last night? Anything um, else I think I think the only other thing I would say is that um, when when it got to the point where Joe Biden started talking about um, how this was affecting families and that it was affecting how families were living, people losing their jobs, and the, the, the effects of COVID 
practical effects of COVID that they were having on people's kitchen table issues. Donald Trump with that one thing, oh, here he goes again, talking about families and, and, and you're you know, such a and, politician and, and yeah, like, yeah, oh, but, this is so, your. But when he said that part about, oh, here he goes again, talking about families and kitchen table issues, I was like, dude, that that's who you're supposed to be the president of. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> we're, 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 he's the king, you know, we're supposed to care. I mean, he's out of his freaking gourd. Yeah. He's just and nuts. You, yeah. And you realize how detached he is from the idea of family. I got from that moment, from that particular piece, he told a lot about how disconnected his family is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Real Dango is saying exactly COVID-19 be begins a person's pre-existing condition. And he also mentions Trump didn't offer anything new or 45 did not offer anything new about COVID-19. No. no. All right. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. It was quite shocking, to be honest with you. He was so not prepared. Yeah. And All so right. that means that he has no plan going forward if he's reelected. It's just going to be like this, that up and down, up and down, up and down until there is a vaccine. And with there having been a one of the vaccines, somebody died. They're putting mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff on hold right now. Yeah, they are. Okay, well, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's catching the conversation, especially live, but also if you're catching on the replay. And what uh, Shike and uh, Jill D are dropping knowledge bombs about last night's presidential debate. So the next subject was race in America. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 who wants to start? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How... How did <laughs> his response when Joe Biden had this awful. excellent response about how, you know, he didn't have to teach his children how to behave when pulled over by police and to show that there is a variable distance, a variable difference in that there is systemic racism. Trump's initial response to that question that um, Kristen Walker asked was to go through this whole uh, QAnon conspiracy th thing about Hunter Biden. Th that that was just like it, he didn't even pivot from the question. He just like completely ignored it. And then the part that the part that got me um, that I paid attention to was specifically how he tried to peel off the votes of black men, like literally weaponizing votes of black men. And um, with the with his discussion of bringing up the crime bill. And um, I hope that black men watching that felt used because it was deliberate. It was notice that he mentioned he didn't mention black women at all. He he no. knows we're he knows we're not he knows this, but yeah. when he he specifically peeled off black he specifically targets black men because there is this fundamental um I guess small base black men that he has under his under his tutelage that seem to want to vote for him. And some people say it's the strength, it's the it's the masculinity. I have no idea what it is. I, I think that um you know it goes into another issue of trading one patriarchy for another, which is a longer discussion. But the way that Trump handled race it, it was the same old thing. I've done more for black people than you know any other president except except for and he says maybe Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. maybe Abraham Lincoln. I'm like, you know what, Lyndon B. Johnson wants to have a word with you, right? You know, Eisenhower might want to have a word with you. It, it just it 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 it's like he turned the whole conversation about black people onto him, and then there was that awkward moment where he said something about what was the part about um. Oh yeah, and then I look out in the audience, and it's so dark. 
Yeah, and I'm the least racist of everybody. Uh, okay. uh, that was interesting. So you notice that, and it's interesting, and before, sorry to interrupt, Joe, before you jump oh, in, okay. but I was, I was reading someone's commentary today. He says, you notice that 45 says he's the least racist. He doesn't say he's not a racist. Right, meaning like everybody else who hangs out with him is more, racist. more racist. And yeah. like my wife, she's sitting over there She's more racist than me, which is probably actually true if we put the two of them together. Um, I think that for me, the race in America thing, when he went on about, you know, he's released the most people from jail and started to throw out his little cards. And then Joe was like, we released a thousand, like, you know, we commuted sentences. What are you talking about? You did 20. I mean, really? And, <laughs> And then he went on about the schools and the universities. Well, have they received their checks yet? Because uh, I don't think so. That's all talk. These are all like really weird. I love the part where he said, I have these nice black guy, these guys coming into my office crying for things. He made Tim Scott sound like he goes in there whining and please, massa, massa, please. Can you get me just a little bit of help? You know, I went on to Ballotpedia and looked at how much money Tim Scott makes a year. And that said it all. If you start looking at the people who make the least amount, it's really not just the Republicans who are make the most. It's the ones who are making the least. They want to get up there with the rest of their, you know, brethren to get that money. Uh, now it makes sense why so many of them are kissing his ass. Um, but they're gonna be left out in the cold. These are people that are only making like, you know, they're not on judiciary committees. They're not, they haven't really branched out. So Trump is their expansion route. No different than Charlemagne, whatever his name is, that he knows that every time I talk crap about Biden, then I get higher ratings when I do this. So there's all this lack of uh, this influencer network, Waka Flocka, 50 Cent, we'll talk about them later. Those people, um, it's so suspect. And it's really, really, really scary to me because the race in America, uh, what he's offering when he talked about the crime bill. Well, everybody knows. And then the super predators and all of this other stuff that came out again. But it's not really true because crime was going down. But all Trump pinpoints on is just enough red meat to get through it. But when you corner him is when you'll start getting back when he started going after his son. That's how you know when you're getting to him because, you know, and then he tried to play Joe for a fool of that Abraham Lincoln thing by making it seem like, no, Joe, you got it confused and all that kind of stuff. He's just a dirty man. I feel, I always take a shower after I watch anything with Trump on. I just feel you know, um, this is this is a really this person is racist. He does not believe in police reform. Uh, he will it will be the same old same old. Uh, Biden has made an attempt to listen to the communities. I mean, really listen. And he's got an active group of people around him who are key people who've been a part of this whole process, who have anticipated this momentous change in America. And they are beside him building this coalition of people. And they're in all factions of our black community, brown communities everywhere. Trump doesn't have that. He's still got Stephen Miller. He's still got these old dirt bags who just tried to fleece this country to no ends. And that for me, with the race thing, anybody who's supporting him basically based upon any of that, is racist. I think that even some of the groups that the television shows had who were undecided voters, that comment, I'm the least racist here, was the one that was the nail in his coffin for some of the undecided voters. Because that just, it took a minute like to go, what did you just say? That one was so revealing. It, it you know, and I don't even think he caught it <laughs> until after the damn debate, somebody had to tell him. I don't think no. he knew. He did not know. It was like a beat that went through. You For a second, you could hear a pin drop. It was just like, oh, wow. Mm. 
I don't know. So race in America, those were my issues with him particularly. He has no clue and he doesn't care. And he is using the black males with the bravado and the hubris. And um, that's a whole serious topic. We're oh, going yeah, to have we're, we're, as we're black gonna... people talking yeah. about yes. that hierarchy within our own structure of, of people. That is something to really address what's happening. And I- um, let, let, Let's parking that. Love yeah. that for later because I have a very interesting question for both of you in regards to that. But we're going to get to that later. Aisha, anything you're wanting to add to how the race in America well, was handled in last night's con debate? Yeah, but there were two things that stuck out to me. First of all, I'm representing my HBCU. Yes, I was going to ask what sweatshirt you were wearing. All right, there you go, Fisk, girl. Yep, Fisk University. All right. Um, if he was giving enough money to HBCUs. They wouldn't be in such desperate, uh, right. uh, stat you know status to where they're they are begging alumni. It's like, oh yeah, I gave money to HBCUs. They're not prospering. They were all a lot of these HBCUs were already in such dire straits. A lot, a lot on the verge of closing. Okay, so he he, he did nothing. A lot of them were lit. And, and let's be honest, the ones that he made sure I had the money were the ones who are land grant institutions. And he had taken the money away in the first place. He had taken away the money that they were owed in the first place. All he did was replace it. Exactly. Um, and so it looked like he was giving them money. And the H if, if he was giving them money, the HBCU presidents wouldn't have to come back to him every time. OK, yeah. he would just have it in the budget and it would be in, instead of it being at the same level, he would count for the increase and in for um, inflation and all of that. But it, it's full. That got that got to me. But that also got to a lot of us who are HBC alum. He forgets that we vote. He forgets that there's an HBC alum on the ticket. OK, with with um, Joe Biden. So that that was that was another thing. That was something else that kind of stuck out to me that told me that this guy did not do his homework, okay? Because that was something that he should have just squashed. The other thing was, um, I just lost my train of thought that quickly. Um, on this um, idea of being the least racist person, um, the, the thing about it is that you realize that um, he has no con he has no concept of what that means. Um, and his idea of what black needs are always goes straight to criminal justice. They, oh. never, they never go to things that we we need to take care of our families. He talks about jobs. Well, p black people don't want to work two and three jobs. So you, right. you have to help. Okay, but then he goes to this thing about crime. He always mentions the crime bill. That's always his first thing. Well, you want to talk about crime, the crime bill, let's talk about this. He brings up the 1994 uh, crime bill and he, he talks to, um, he talks about Joe about this. Joe has apologized for it and, and says that he wishes he hadn't done it or hadn't done it differently. Let's talk about the crime bill because a lot of people who are going in on this crime bill I've noticed are millennials and Gen Z who have no clue people who weren't even alive or born. Everybody wanted and that crime bill. Exactly, Everybody exactly. because the crack epidemic was no joke. Yeah. Gangs at the time were no joke. Okay. People were scared. Black people, especially because crime happens in your own communities. Okay. Right. People you in your own communities, you are the victims in your own communities nine times out of 10. And black people, what, what was it? it? It all started because of that basketball player or somebody who um, who died from, from a crack overdose or something like that. This is, that's where the, this bill originates. You have the, you have the going, going to, you know, the politicians saying, look, 
we'll support we'll support you we we need this done you had all the community leaders saying we need this done the part that got perverted with the crime bill was the little loophole that left for states to be able to these punishments the way that they were right. able to enforce them. and so because remember the, the crime bill was a federal so they're talking federal crime right so they're talking about these when they were they were specifically talking about these um mandatory sentences for drug offenses right mm -hmm. crack crack cocaine that's where we get the idea that you have black people going to jail for longer periods for crack than you had white people going for cocaine those were those loopholes that you had states taking because they were not written into there was not something written into the bill they didn't foresee that happening that states were going to be were going to do that and that's where they had to add that part about the same sentence for the same crime because states were taking advantage but i don't think you know you, you, you have to remember a lot of what these millennials and the gen zers know about the 94 crime bill is coming from what they're getting on the internet from Russian bots. But somebody needs to do a an era of a, like a, a webcast or something that just capsulizes the era that was happening, the music, the news, the everything, because people like to go on and take these things out of context. The reality is, I think I said it last week, Predator was on everybody's term terminology. It was the since we were all saying predator. Why? Because we'd had songs like, you know, that had gotten into the atmosphere uh, with the predator. I'm a predator. I'm coming for you. Predator you know, was a movie. It was a movie. Uh, it was a, It was a movie. But we also had it where you had uh, the rappers even going into using some of the most horrific threatening words in our dictionary to sell records and to scare people. And so predator was a common term, you know, and it was rough. I mean, it was rough and every mayor and everybody wanted a crime bill. The interesting thing is the crime bills that were being enforced at that time were the Reagan ones and the Reagan ones were pretty intense. And they sort of, you could have been sitting your ass in jail indefinitely, but each state started to do its own little jimming with things where there were stronger licenses. But here's the thing that Joe brought up so beautifully, which was Trump wrote a book and in the book, he talked about the Central Park Five like crazy. Even when I was living in New York, it was every day, Trump, 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 about you know killing the five kids who were accused of this horrific crime in Central Park. Even to this day, he's never apologized to those guys who were completely exonerated. He didn't, he still likes to leave it hanging where he did not decide to go, hey, I'm sorry, I was part of the mob that just wanted to like rip your heads off. He also in his book stated how lethal injection was too nice. So I really love that Biden brought that out because Trump has gotten away with saying so many horrific things and all people need to start doing is go to a library and go and get the microfiche and look, look at stuff. Stop believing it's all here yeah. um, online the internet. So yes, but Biden never called him them super predators. He said there was, I wa I've watched the whole 1994 thing and it wasn't super predator. But even if it was, yes, it was happening. And they, there were some that went to jail and super predators because they got all juiced up on their, their whatever and their rap music and started to, you know, the same men supporting these stupid, but the same ones are basically were ginned up, couldn't wait to be such badasses out there. And the craziest thing of all is that I'm supposed to feel sorry that your ass got put in jail. Why? Why is this important? 
the fact that it's extenuated this long, yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. The fact that it's moved into other areas. But imagine, you know, we're, we're going to like say, look, the three strike law came into being just because of two serial murders that happened out here in California, the polyclass murder and the Kimber something murder. Those created the, the three strike laws. Th those came because they were like, oh, hell no, people aren't going to crawl in people's windows and start killing like the Night Stalker. Three strike law, those were really important. And, you know, speaking of which, Trump supporters remind me of that, that Ramirez guy, serial killer, sitting in jail and women falling in love with him. It's that's the mentality. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But we've always had these sickos. So trying to defend what people do in laws and how laws actually, there was a time people had to use the guillotine. I mean, really? Were we going to go back and like rehash that? It's a drag, but we had to come to this time to deal with it. You mean to tell me uh, Trump couldn't have decided to change the crime bills? What did he do? Let 20 people out because Kim Kardashian decided that they needed to be out? Well, here's the interesting part about it, because Trump brings up that how during COVID, New York City is like a ghost town. It's like, you know, downtown New York is this and that. But remember, in the 90s, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, Broadway looked look nothing. I know. Like I it took an acting now. class in it that area. I'm nothing. telling you. It was it was. It was so crime ridden. Yeah. And people used to not be able to ride the subways. Thank you. That the way that they can ride them now. No, and, they're, and they're really pushing were, it. People were afraid to ride. And, and even now, the subways are safer. <laughs> Things still go down on the subways, but they're, they're a lot safer. Um, Do I know. think what was pretty bad trying young people as adults? Yeah. Yes, I do. But then again, let's look at this. We can't even figure out when people can have sex. What is considered, you know, you're 16 or is she going to be underage at 18? I mean, there's just some real because of the religious right being so involved and entrenched in things. Not everything has gotten done at the times at the right times it needed to be. Yeah. And that's where where it's why it's so easy to blame because the courts can only go as fast and work for, you know, to an advantage, but I mean George W could have changed the crime bill. He could have done it. He could have changed it to a better system. Let's and let's be clear up. because a okay. lot a lot of once once that once those laws were enacted a lot of crime went down in a lot of places, particularly places that were plagued by, you know, serious gang activity. I can say mm -hmm. in my hometown, my hometown. Out here they too. They don't call it gun wave in New Haven for nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the the crime, the shootings went down. They they saw them start starting to spike up when when a lot of those guys were getting out of the prison sentences. I mean, so, I, before we go, I just want to say I do care that people were locked up for crazy small crimes that didn't, you know, didn't justify or warrant whatever it was that they did. However, it's a, the way the whole system worked. But I'm also going to say black people were not involved in voting and neither were people of color. There were decades that have gone by since the civil rights time where there really was no activism for a long time with active people showing up at the polls. And I can say, even I wasn't one of them who was like, I'm going to go and, you know, talk to you're young. You're not thinking about it. Boomers who are now thinking now were very much responsible for why that happened because we didn't care. We didn't care that people were being locked up. We were just happy. It wasn't us. Yeah, and, and that some of those is because items. we were not voting and we were yeah. not, if, if particularly if you weren't in a college or you weren't, you know, we were just trying to get on with our lives. And now we're learning that you can't get on with life without including people and other people and caring about your community. Okay. The boomer generation is the selfish, most selfish of all. All right. Aisha, anything we want to add to when we move on? Um, 
just that if any if any millennial or gen um gen z person really wants to know how how it was go watch the movie lean on me that is that is like what was going on inside that school okay that was real yeah all right next conversation topic uh looking at last night's debate national security oh please <laughs> what, what are you doing that for aisha <laughs> go ahead. you obviously you want to start so go for it um well today i was reading you know how trump um he's got these ads on tv and he's talking about what is it jobs not mobs and um he starts by showing pictures of Minneapolis and, and all the uh, looting and the fires and stuff. Well, it comes out today that the people that had done it um, were uh, his folks. Yeah, they're those, those supporters. National security, you can't be the um, law and order president if you can't get your own people under um, thumb. So how, how are you gonna how are you gonna rule the rest of the country when your people are the ones that are out of order? Your my people favorite, are the ones. <laughs> your people. My are favorite the part was when Joe called the Proud Boys the poor boys. poor boys. That was just the funniest part. I was like, okay, this brought some levity for me. And, and the Proud Boys, they lost it on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, the thing with, of course, you know, that's they were so the thing. Mad. He cut their oxygen. I think that the whole thing about national security and those are just all fear tactics for me he <clears throat> is not that person i mean particularly even when he went into saying how was this the part where he said he spoke to obama about korea north korea or was that the foreign foreign topic i don't i don't even know anymore i think by that point for me personally I was just like beside myself with his whole thoughts on national, national security. security. I think national security and foreign policy got like branded into one. Yeah. So one then he lied and said that he sat with Obama for an hour and taught and Obama said that we were going to be in a war with North Korea. And it was like, that's come out that that wasn't true. I mean, it, it's like, there's not everything he says it's so hyper exaggerated and I'm a very emotional person. Even I'm like, you know, it's too much every time because it's like, he can't manage anything. It's always at breakneck speed. And I think that going on about defending yet again, white supremacists in his, you know, slick way. It, it's a, for me. Yeah. But notice that he didn't deny what, what, um, Joe Biden said about what he said about the Proud Boys. Notice that he did not deny it. No, usually, that's what I'm saying. Usually, he didn't deny it. Usually he denies everything. He did not deny this. And the scary and then the scary part of it was that you, you know, remember the thing that we can't get away from when he talks about national security is that for him to say that he wants to be the law and order president He's also putting people in jeopardy who are governors, um, who are uh, Congress members, putting their lives in jeopardy, okay? Right. Because, you know, the, the whole, he, he's still out there talking about Gretchen Whitmire. Yeah. Okay, and, and how she needs, and how she needs to go. He's still firing up his base. His comment about AOC plus three. Okay, as if that doesn't gin up his base and and not just his his base, the regular hateful people, it gins up the worst hateful people, the ones who are on the domestic terrorist list. OK, right. it up exactly. Those, those people and those are the people who who send death threats to Elon Omar. Those are the people who are who who come up with these elaborate plots to kill to uh, kidnap and behead Gretchen Whitmer. And, and you, you, he, it just, he is the biggest threat to our national security. He right is now. also because he runs his mouth so much. I mean, if he, even if he did 
have a conversation with President Obama about North Korea, I'm pretty sure it was classified on some level. And I'm pretty sure he shouldn't be running his mouth about it. It's just, it, it's the most absurd thing to think that he has such a good relationship. He got a little frazzled when Biden was mentioning his relationships with Kim Jong-un and he was like saying, well, I can talk to him and whatever. Right. Big deal, man. Nobody was saying that you couldn't. Water seeks its own level. But the fact that you two get along and you don't see what there's, there's no intention, there's no, what is the intention? What's the motive for yeah. any of it? Just because you calmed, wait, he said he stopped a war. I mean, this dude, you gotta, you gotta just sit back. He, he prevented missiles and all of that. That bothered him so much. It that really did. did. It bothered him so much that he got on the phone. He held a press conference today to get on the phone with Benjamin Netanyahu and say, Sleepy Joe wouldn't have made this deal. And he got so Sleepy. much shade back. <laughs> and Bibi did not comply. That's because Bibi knows. Bibi could read polls. Mm -hmm. Bibi knows how this is going to end. Absolutely. Who he's, who he's going to have to deal with come January 2021. Mm. Oh, man, the comments are flying in tonight. Real Jan Gold, 45 is consistently irresponsible with the running of his mouth. Yes. And uh, oh. Black Beauty, Aisha, you're right. He uses that stale, exactly platform of lies. All the all the time, 45 lies like the rug on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He knows, he oh, knows the, um, oh. middle ground. It's always extremes with him. Either it's the worst in the history of um the country, uh, or it's or the, the best. best. The best. It's, it's really. It's nothing it's is ever like just really. Good. But oh I don't know. God. We were turning the corner on COVID. You yep. know that that's not a big deal. So uh, yeah. Let's move on. And uh, another comment that came up on well, subject last night: climate change. And this is where. Some people think 45 may have got a little bit of a, a win on this one last night. Hmm. Well, the reason they think that 45 got a little bit of a win on it is, first of all, I'd like to say uh, how old were those people that thought he got a win on it? Because if they're <laughs> boomers, boomers seem to think they're going to live forever, and we're not. Um, the interesting thing is it's so funny how many people – are so short-sighted because even if you look at the statistics shell because okay i'll put the thing out here so biden basically came out and said about fracking that he wasn't you know that he trump was saying you supported fracking now you don't support fracking it just turned into this and then yes at one point biden did say that he was not a big proponent of fracking. But what he, if anybody follows his page, he's talking about not funding it federally anymore. And, but the private fracking grounds, which I don't think many people realize, a lot of it is private owned, that can continue. But what's so interesting is, why are we going after somebody who, is thinking ahead. I mean, Shell has cut, there were a lot of things that happened in 2020 and I don't know if many people were paying attention because I do believe that during COVID, a lot of companies that, because Andrew Yang had been predicting, we will be moving more into artificial intelligence and a bunch of different changes are coming down the pipeline. So I do believe that when I was reading, because I had nothing to do, you could see that certain companies were making those changes now, as opposed to doing that transition later. Office space, all that stuff. Microsoft was like, the hell with it. Everybody work from home indefinitely. We'll deal with the real estate. Um, that isn't just because of COVID, as much as COVID just sort of pushed where it was ultimately headed in that department. So Joe obviously sees this coming down the pipeline. He's been around, yes, 47 years. Yes, there were times he had said about changing things in social security, doing this, doing that. It's because you change and you become flexible with things or with the way things are happening. 
climate change, you have to have some flexibility here. We're looking at a lot of fires, we're looking at a lot of flooding, storms, all sorts of things. And to mitigate some of that suffering that is going to be coming, whether it be physical suffering from the disasters or just the suffering that will occur from people losing their jobs, being displaced because of artificial intelligence. So Shell, at the beginning of the year, cut all of its oil production 40% from oil and gas production to prepare for energy transition. So did BP. They did that in 2018. BP, Shell, Chevron, Total, ENI, Exxon. They've all cut production at 40%. Now here's where it crosses back into the foreign relationships. Well, what the hell is Saudi Arabia going to do? What the hell is going to happen to the Emirates? That's barely staying afloat on a sand island, which is no different than like a quenelle sitting on top of a custard. You know, it's like the reality here is you're looking at a couple of masters that that Trump wants to serve and make whatever he can get, because the truth is it's going to change. Many people are not looking at Biden wants wants to move it slowly into a transition by 2040 or 2050. And for me, that actually makes sense with that transition that will definitely be happening. Um, why he has not supported the Green New Deal was because the Green New Deal wanted everything done by 2030, which would, after what we've gone through now with transitioning, you can't, you couldn't even go through this. So we've had a lot of transitions going on and they will continue but it's just how do you mitigate it so for me that was that was the biggest part that i think people are missing and i don't think that trump won that round it was just a matter of like you said he said but the content of what he was saying was really really important because this has to be done so carefully you're looking at a situation where people think oh tesla they're all electric cars and blah 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 the rest of the world has to catch up. Well, there will be new kind of things that change with batteries or whatever. However, don't think that those car companies don't already have in their drawer the, um, the means to make electric cars. The only reason that they're not doing all of that is because they have stockholders and shareholders who want their money. So for me, that whole display last night showed you who Trump was. I am for the corporations and the stockholders, and I'm going to make sure they get their money now and who want to live until 2050. Yeah, I, um, I was actually quite impressed with how Joe Biden mentioned um, environmental racism, someplace that Trump didn't go to. When Biden starts talking about um, his own experience living around those um, oil those oil oh. canister things where the where they were leaking and, and living by the fences and things and he talks about now you have people who are you know people of color living around those things now and they're it's poisoning their water and you know all of that um i was very impressed with how he talked about that and how totally. he started and how he started it with telling trump you know, you don't understand climate change. Let me tell you about this. Because, right. because Trump is here talking about how wind hurts birds. Mm -hmm. birds As if he wind. ever gave a birds damn about a bird. To, <laughs> birds Come need on. wind to kind of, to kind of coast when they um, just want to fly. You know what Girl, I mean? They, what he did can... to live wildlife in this country yeah. with the killing of the wolves and all the animals, he... All of a sudden, the only bird that he cares about is a turkey or chicken that's sitting on his plate to eat or mm -hmm. inside that chicken burger at McDonald's. That's but, the bird. But let me tell you, I mean, when he here it is. Trump sounded crazy on the issue of climate change when he started talking about that. And then, you know, and and how. Um, what else did he say was gonna was um cancer? You know, people, it caused people, cancer. The, the windmills. Caused He's worried cancer about and cancer, and the rest of us happened through COVID. That just mm -hmm. I was like, really? So you are the all of a sudden COVID 
is not a really big deal, but you're worried about cancer. Really? Yeah, and, 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 so, dude. and so when that got, when that got too hot, he started with the name calling and, and mm-hmm. it just, it, it just climate change, climate change, yet another issue that he knows nothing about. He, here's the thing. He made fun of Joe Biden for prepping for this. Okay. And what he showed throughout these different topics, but especially on something like climate change, which would have been so easy had he just opened a freaking book that he wasn't prepared. He ca- he came unfaired. Because he's the type of person who learns he about if it's only what he cares about. Because they were saying that he can't even get this whole thing straight when he's going after Hunter Biden yeah. because it's a concocted story by Bannon and Miller, everybody else, and Giuliani. And somehow in the middle of it, they either briefed him and he wasn't paying attention. He couldn't pronounce the dude's name, who he said had all this information. This is the problem with Trump. He doesn't care. I don't think he does a day's worth, damn day's worth of work. I think he sits on the <laughs> phone that, all day and doesn't do sh- I'm just curious. Who the I hell think, is running the country? I think that he he thinks that he can bluff his way through things. Because that's he how he's bluff got, through that last night. Gotten, no, but that's how he's gotten through life. And I think that he thinks he can bluff his way through the serious issues. And, and as long as, because remember, his job in the debate was not to speak to his base. His job was to pluck off um, people who were going with Biden, who were just, you know, were doing it for the heck of it, that could have been pulled away, or these fools who still say that they're undecided, but they're closeted Trump voters. He, I mean, he had one job, and it was I, to build uh, and add on to his base, not to speak to his base. They, true. They're, they're already going to vote for him. It's true. And we know that, but I also feel like it, it's just quite mind blowing that we've gotten to the point in this country as just people about how we plan our lives, how we do things, because the more advanced planning and smart investment we make into renewables, it's it's keeps us from suffering a very painful transition. And it just baffles my mind that that seems to be the sum total of who he is. There's no planning on anything. It's fly by the seat of your pants. Everything is, well, you know, whatever. Uh, Talking erroneously about healthcare. People, yes, who are sitting and living near oil fields, yeah, they're making a lot of money, but they're gonna spend all of it buying healthcare because you're about to cut everything off. Yeah, and and, and that was ridiculous. And that's the other thing too, because remember, the, we have to fix the we have to fix the climate because it's yet another thing that's causing all of these pre-existing conditions in people, and yet again, reminding people that he wants to take away health, he wants to take away health care. Yeah, A week after this election, they are going to try and take away that um, pre-existing condition. But let me make this really clear so we remember this about our health care. The ACA and Obamacare was a great thing. There were caveats put in by each Republican state with the mandate. The mandate, if you didn't have it, was what, $600 for the year. You could basically create a wash with that in your taxes or you would pay it. Now, $600 is going to stop me from having health care that was really being listed at $200 and $300 a month. But here's where it got ugly. As it escalated over a few years because of Republicans opening up that marketplace, and in the last couple of years since Trump was in, he opened up the marketplace. So even if you had a corporate job, I don't know if many people noticed this, when you went in looking for your insurance for that year, it was going through the ACA marketplace, which was causing the Obamacare numbers to rise. So whereas my insurance was maybe like 200 bucks or 300, because they started to have the 
corporations and sort of small businesses trying to access it, it pushed all the numbers up from the insurance departments, insurance companies. So everybody's got it wrong. I personally don't get it anymore. I don't get people, but I remember when this country, when you had no health care, none. As it is, people don't even have dental anymore. And I think it's pretty damn apparent that there is no dental in this. I mean, <laughs> it's gotten really bad. It is bad, bad, bad. Snaggle okay. and everybody. Let's move on to the final topic that the, the two individuals chatted about last, last night, leadership. <laughs> Anyone want to tackle that one? I mean, Trump. Trump doesn't make any sense. He talked about himself. He he basically went back and um, talked about, you know, what he thinks his accomplishments were. Joe Biden gave people hope and 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 promise. I felt like put it like this: Trump, when he gave his little leadership spiel made my anxiety go like up, 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 up. But when Joe gave his, it kind of like was, Ooh, okay, I'm gonna finally get some sleep after January. Um, he doesn't deserve to be president. At that no. point that he was supposed to be talking was to show us why I should give him my vote. He couldn't. And in fact, every time he can't answer something, that's when he went for Hunter. And, you know, at times with Joe, I was like, you got to come back. But I love that he didn't go after the man's kids when it's so obviously easy for us to go after Donald Trump's children. Yep. Okay. And all I right. voted already. OK, so for me to sit, for me to sit there and no. listen to this. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so then in summary, did 45 do better this time than the last time out? Okay, you know what? Let me say this. This is the thing that pissed me off about reading all the reviews today. And um, I'm just going to say this. That 53% from last time, they so badly wanted a reason to vote for Trump again. And so their reason this time is that he was calmer. Okay? Because all the... Just because he, you know, took a sedative or something and was Palmer this time does not mean that he said anything different. He was still the same ugly, nasty, evil person. His rhetoric was still racist, sexist, and xenophobic. He was still talking oh, about- Oh, the low IQ people, thing with the, the racist. Low, yes. That yes, Mexicans and Mexican. people who exactly. came across the border and came yep. back and did everything properly. Exactly. He basically said they had low IQs. Right. We did. He, exactly. That was another one. We forgot we about that one. The kids in cages, okay. Yeah. And you know, when asked about the people, the, the kids being separated, he had no empathy. Okay. None. None whatsoever. His his response to kids being pulled away from the parents that they won't be reunited with was, well, they're being very well taken care of. Meanwhile, mean we've seen video of kids who've died in, in lockup with their mylar, mylar, you're right. Well, and I just jumping in, there's some of the commentators saying, what about the 500 parents and children that have been separated? They can't find them. And apparently, well, reports say that the government's doing nothing to find them. It's Of course they're not. They're doing and nothing to find them because they didn't, they didn't, do anything to, to, to Look, track them. Let's take it even further. There have been, there are cases right now pending where young women who've been taken at the border are, are saying they've been raped and sexually assaulted. If your parents aren't around, God knows what they've done to these children. In America, it is criminal. As Biden said, this is criminal. I don't even okay. really know. We All call right. slavery the original sin. And the thing is, is that the same practices that were perpetrated on slaves in um, during in the antebellum South are the same practices that are being perpetrated on Latino Americans coming across the border. We're talking about the rape and battery of women and children. We're talking about the separation of parents from their children never to be reunited again. 
These are things that happen to black people. These are things that are now the same tactics are being done. And Trump wants to say that he's the least racist of all. OK, he's and, nothing but a slave owner right now. And before we go, I want to just make a comparison because everybody always compares. Oh, now I see how the Germans, how people went along with how this happened. Very different time right now. We have something called social media. In fact, Americans who support Donald Trump are worse than what happened in Germany because they are actually being shown videos, pictures of the actual abuse. And I believe that for me, that's worse than, yeah. yes, in Germany, it was like, oh, is that happening? No, no, can't be, not here. We actually have abuses going on in this country. We have a documented videotaped and you people out there who support Trump are deliberately pretending it doesn't exist. You, you'll worse. see a baby. You'll see a baby being snatched from its mother's breast, but you won't believe that is true. No, it's but because they don't. He told the story that that Joe Biden boiled three babies before breakfast. Right. I, it, it, it right. Does. Jill, before we leave the debate, did forty-five imp do a better job this time? No, unless it was that they put uh, some kind of electrical charging thing down his pants like uh, apparently Rudy Giuliani mics himself up that way uh, maybe it was some kind of buzzer I don't freaking know with these old ass dirty men well, no, my favorite thing on Twitter today was the uh, was the, the uh, thing that the only time he came alive was um, when uh, Joe Biden mentioned cocaine <laughs> and his eyes were so true up. Uh, and, okay, so we're just putting up here the biggest question that needs to be asked about 45 is, do people feel 45 is a better person now than he was in 2016? And also Django asks, I say he's the same bum he was in Queens. Yeah. The presidency didn't make him a better person. I think it made him worse, and I'll say this is why it made him, he's worse than he was in 2016, because he got impeached and was not removed. So now he feels like he can do absolutely anything and get away with it. So just, and this is our final final comment before we move on to some other topics. How did Mr. Biden do? Better, same, or worse than the first? Well, I won't even say the first one. The first one wasn't. That was just an. That was just crazy. But how did? How do you feel he did? He held the line. He did, and good. I think he had. I think he maintained the gains that we made, and I also believe that he had a few receipts with him when he was talking about his book, and that they are working it, his yeah. team, and he figured out how to get some real clean hits in there. So yeah, I think he did a fabulous job. And right. he didn't have to go for the he didn't have to go for the jugular because Barack Obama already did a few days earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, there was a point where he sort of um, detached himself slightly from Barack Obama in regards he to did. the health plan. Yeah. So he said, you know, I, the Biden the difference, yeah, says he, he said, I'll be president. I won't be, vice. I'm not vice president. So well, because, because that other goof was, doesn't understand how government <laughs> works and doesn't know what the role of a vice president is. Well, apparently. that's because that's because he put his vice president in care in um, charge of the COVID thing. So he's assuming that because he did that. that you know what he Obama gives Pence? He gives Pence his coloring book every day and goes, here's some crayons. Can you just throw <laughs> sand right the line? Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Pence Chill. ain't doing nothing. Chill. Oh, Black Beauty, <laughs> Black Beauty says Joe did better. He was not, he was totally prepared. So he was mm -hmm. totally yeah. prepared. All yeah. right. Well, Believe it or not, there are other things going on in America, folks. And the ladies are going to give some takes on what some other things that's going on. So first thing here we have on the plate, threats to kill Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And this probably isn't too much of a surprise after the Minnesota <laughs> governor has had death threats on her life. Aisha brought this up. So Aisha, give us the take on this. Well, basically, they've had, um, I think there are three people that have been arrested in the last couple of days because they were plotting to kill 
Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. One person said that he was going to kill Joe Biden, uh, rape Kamala Harris with the barrel of a gun and then kill her. Mm -hmm. And he got arrested. Another person had all these guns and explosives and stuff and was on his way to like a rally Mm -hmm. and got um, caught. And then there was a third person I was reading who basically um, was threat sent some threats. And so these and these are all Trump people. One of one of the third the third person was one of the Boogaloo boys. And so, you know, these these are domestic terrorists. These are Trump says he's the least racist person. You know, he's the least racist person he knows because he associates with people who maim and kill because of race. When when the when your supporters are the Klan, then, yeah, you might be the least racist at the table. But it doesn't mean that you're not a racist. And so these people are like they're you're talking about these people whose fundamental, um, you know, at, at their core, they have issues against about race. They have issues about, uh, you know, just a, a diverse America. They have these are white men who want the country to stay where they believe they remember it. A lot of them don't even remember it or what they were told in 1955 when they had power, they had all the money, and that was that. They had total autonomy. The funny thing about it is that the ones that are making these threats, if you go back to 1955, are the white men that had the least amount of power. They didn't own property. They barely had jobs. And like Jill said, the three that I saw are in serious need of dental care. Girl. (laughs) Jill, anything you want to add? And that, woo, you bad (laughs) team. You you know that? Infections, disease. Um, You know, my thing is I there is something really wrong and no one's really enough people are not talking about what has happened to white males, young white males, particularly too. Um, I can only assume that now once Purdue is cutting them off from their freaking drug habits, maybe, um, maybe some of them will get some help. I think that a particularly noxious group of young men who live in the fantasy world of, you know, uh, video games and uh, hating women, and they call them incels. And I do believe it's an epidemic. I think they've been radicalized. I think it's easy to radicalize them. But hopefully the plan, if Biden gets in, for more, more mental health facilities to start dealing with some of these people, it's very important because you, the country has some very awful issues of access. I think there should be some limits on online. Certain people, it's like they want to say what a predator who's a sexual predator can and can't do. Well, I do believe that stalkers online and people who who find this this computer is dangerous for some people. And I think that they might even have to start creating things where people can't use it or it's limited by day or something like that. I think that as artificial intelligence moves on, it'll take care of that. I mean, because we, in essence, for me, it's like, oh, so now it's the death threat group because what happened? They weren't able to go out and shoot up a bunch of kids in school because nobody's in school anymore. I mean, there's a need in this country to be violent. There's a desire that people have been angry for a really long time. If they didn't heed the warnings of people blowing five-year-olds to bits, then this is where we are. But short of policing these people heavily with artificial intelligence, it's going to continue. But I feel like they've forfeited their rights to have any privacy once you start doing those things. All right. And if you're engaging online, I think you're forfeiting some of your rights anyway. And you've got to and you've got to ask yourself this, this this serious question because these people 
um, they really don't like people of color. They really hate diversity. When um, they hate black, everything, they're curmudgeons. Yeah, they're but just when, hateful. But, yes, but when Black Lives Matter and people of color, black women, were saying we were being harassed and all this online, you have you had groups like Facebook and Stitcher and all these other, you know, um, platforms not doing anything. But I Q told you all about QAnon, letting nerds go too far in society. QAnon, they were nerds for a reason. Right. But QAnon targets white men and white women, and all of a sudden, they're cutting them off the platforms, cold turkey. And it's so, so interesting, the wonder. biracials, the biracial ones, like the boys, it's the boys that are actually really bugging out. Some of the ones who support Trump, um, I said it in a tweet and a lot of people probably didn't see it or got a little bit, but that's another study to look yeah. upon is when you're raised by a white mother versus being raised by a black mother. Okay. Very different. Let's, let's move on to another uh, new subject. Uh, what's going on with some of the political races in the set for the Senate and the house of representatives. And uh, I, I usually don't get a chance to break news to the, to the thought leaders here, but um, prominent news reporter on Fox, Lou Dobbs, been there for a long time. And it's always interesting because Lou Dobbs was with CNN before he went over yeah. to Fox. Yeah. yeah. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. That's he's another really, conversation. Really Trumpy. Right. Saying that people should not vote for Lindsey Graham. Is mm. Lindsey Graham in that much trouble? Miss Lindsey well, is. Well, as of today, yeah, because Jamie Harrison's um, poll numbers are two points ahead. Wow. But don't you think Lou just gave license to uh, other floundering or on the fence Republicans to cut bait? I mean, I don't know if somebody gave Lou a call and said, I need you to say this. So it gave everybody else the wherewithal to kind of cut bait. We already see Flake um, was already talking about the Republican Party in Arizona and that it doesn't look good. And what's really, really kind of interesting is that the guys who started the Lincoln Project have turned into saying that it kind of goes back to infrastructure and the transition again. Basically, to get the Republican Party back on its legs, some of those old, it has to be totally revamped, burn it down is what they've been saying, because the ones that are in it now, the old, and they said the older white male past boomers, they want them to kind of take, go somewhere else. But the new Republican party is gonna be very different. But see, I wonder about this because see, Lou Dobbs is very tight with Donald Trump. He's a sycophant. And so I wonder if part of what he's saying is Interesting. not coming from Donald Trump. I, I, I'm wondering if, if they want Lindsay gone. Mm. Well, I mean, how much money can they keep sinking into Lindsay? They just, somebody, he just got 10 million. He came up in the polls a little, but something must be telling them that that's not. And you gotta wonder where he got that 10 million from. Exactly. Cause how did he make a million a day? I... Maybe Trump took it out of his Chinese bank account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lin but Lindsay is a sh Lindsay Lindsay is a ship that's not sailing. And, and I saw some interviews that were very interesting of people in South Carolina, some people who were Republicans who were going to vote for Trump, who are not voting for Lindsay and voting for Jamie. Interesting. interesting. You've got some interesting things going on there, but there are twenty-two Senate races. Tell her I'm under the bus and say that there's something. He may have said something at a rally. I mean, a, a lot of people also said that even if Joe Biden wins and Lindsey got in, that Lindsey would be the first one there hugging him and saying, you know, I always liked you. So I think people have got a number on Lindsey and uh, although he, just who he is and uh, and they don't like it. They don't trust him. So Rio Dango is saying his money is doing thing I hear, and I think he's referring to Lindsey Graham. Where is he spending it? That's the question. <laughs> so Aisha, you would know. So they're getting this money. Are they paying people to vote for it? Where does that money go? The ads don't make it any better. I don't, people I hate don't, you. I don't know. Here's the thing. Lindsey, Lindsey Graham has been on TV for um, 
raising money outside the state of South Carolina. Well, mm -hmm. Lindsay's been doing the same, okay? Mm -hmm. But the difference is that Lindsay's been getting his money from corporations True. and from wealthy donors. Jamie's been getting his money from grassroots coalition across the country, you know? But and everybody knows corporations typically give to both. They'll give to Democrats it's, and Republicans. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. interesting Interesting you're saying that because I was listening to a report on NPR about a week and a half ago. And traditionally, the big corporations spend a lot more with the Republicans than the Democrats. But this, they're still spending a lot with the Republicans. But the amount they're supporting the Democrats is going up. Wow. Oh, I yeah. Well, so, that, so that tells you something. But, well, that, yeah. that's because they see who's going to be in charge. Yeah. But, think, here's, yeah. but here's the thing. Um, Jamie has been running ads in Connecticut local news. Okay, he's running in local markets all over the country. So mm -hmm. he's got he's got regular people donating to his cause, and that I think is making a difference compared to. Um, so so interesting enough, 45 mentioned that last night. Well, you know what? If I wanted to get money from these corporations, I could, you know, I could just yeah. give them a call and I'm just going, well, why don't you? But here's like, the thing about uh, I just think the that the Republican Harris Party is going to depart and they're going to be Republicans, but and they're going to leave Trump's thing called Trumpism because even if he doesn't get voted in, those people are not going to go away. But that's Trumpism. It's not even, they're not even Republicans anymore. Yeah, I think they're going to just become like libertarians or something and just like burn down the whole Republican Party. Maybe they should just call themselves a bunch of it. libertines. I don't, or, or I don't even know <laughs> what they are. Yeah. All right, let's move on. And this is one of the wild cards with this election. The Supreme Court of the United States and the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett. <laughs> now, interesting enough, the Supreme Court about a week ago held up a decision for Pennsylvania where they could have, and I can't remember the exact thing, but the, there's a, I can't remember, there's a Supreme Court justice that the Republicans do not like. And he sided with the um, Democrats. So it basically ended up as a tie vote and the Republicans were not happy about it. But Amy Coney Barrett is going to be in soon. Right. Yeah. The um, Supreme Court of Pennsylvania basically said that um, Pennsylvanians who want to vote by mail or vote by ballot don't have to sign. Um, the, they they had that signature thing that um, the Trump people were trying to put in the um, in the way, and they said that they didn't have to do that. So it made I mean, it easier for people to vote. For me, I think if it is, it does look like she'll be in, but. Let's also not discount. Yes, we have Sonia Sotomayor. We have um, who else is on our side in there? Um, we uh, have Kidman. people who, right? So we have people that will probably have to just work twice as hard in how they convince, how they're, you know, if they make it where she can't because of her past writings already about abortion, she's totally, you know, not able to be in on that. Let's just try to hopefully have a little faith that, you know, the others can hold it down till we get in office. And we're going to, um, I think on Sunday, 60 Minutes, we're going to see a very, very compelling <laughs> argument from Joe Biden about expanding the courts because Joe Biden said that, you know what, he's going to actually, one of the things he's going to do is he's going to bring the experts together, the legal minds together, and look at doing a study about expanding the court. So the question says that I, he said that not one party should have. Uh, so how many, eye, how many eyeballs are going to be watching 60 Minutes on Sunday night? Oh, Everybody. a lot because of uh, Trump's um, meltdown. With too. Leslie Stahl, yeah. Right. So that's going to be interesting. That he, is going to be interesting. He played himself putting that out. <laughs> he really did. But you see, he always tries to get ahead of the story. Right. Um, 
but we're so used to this movie. It's like I've seen this movie a couple times now. Uh, yeah, it's and I second. can't watch it. It's that's why it's not landing the way. But you know, his people can sit up there and watch reruns forever. That's what their lives are, just complete reruns every day. Well, now in our last conversation piece tonight, I find very interesting, and I'm I was gonna bring it to the table, but Aisha did this whole issue of rappers in the GOP plot to weaponize black male votes. So unless you've had your head in the sand over the last few weeks, uh, Ice Cube has his contract for Black America. He said that he presented it to the Biden campaign and the 45 campaign. He, he claims that the Biden campaign said they'd look at it after the election. And then 45's people, I can't, there was one, 45's people sort of touted it and promoted that Ice Cube had a meeting with 45. That mixed girl, the one from Texas, a uh, Katrina Pearson. Yes, yes, she tweeted it. Right. So mm -hmm. it started on that. And now just recently, I think today, 50 Cent said, oh, well, if 45 loses, he's going to move out of America. Charlene the mm -hmm. God is saying that, well, he's going to support Biden. But the only reason he's supporting Biden, he's not supporting Biden. He's supporting Kamala Harris. So, ladies, oh, I'm and glad watch the flock of flame. And I'm looking forward to what you have to say on this one because this has been the hot topic in Black America for the last few weeks, especially the Ice Cube. Because Ice, Ice Cube is taking a lot of flack. For he his should. Career. So who wants to go on that first? I will. Okay, because I was heated up. I had a huge discussions on my page about this. And I had so many males coming for me. Um, and then I had the obligate, the white people who didn't even know who Ice Cube was or, or didn't even don't know anybody who just because they were indoors, ah, oh, you know, this is your, so that was really funny. So here's the deal. Ice Cube basically has decided that, or he said he had this, this whole proposal. So if you go in and you look at his contract with America and people were supposed to have these signatures, number one, I'd be really curious, how many signatures did you actually get Ice Cube? Because every time I ask people if they signed it, many of them hadn't read it, didn't know about it, don't know what your plans are. Basically what he did was he took, I don't know if they cut and pasted, Cory Booker and Ayanna Presley's um, ideas for legislation, um, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ilhan Omar, um, uh, Rachel Talib, all these women, and um, even Katie, the, the other one. So he basically put together a perfect America that we have been seeing from these young women and younger people about legislation, about what would really make everything great. He made it seem like, okay, Maxine Waters, they took things and put this in his idea scheme, right? Things that people like Barbara Berry and Maxine, people have been fighting forever for even um, Lewis, you know, all of these people. So there's his contract, here we go. And Trump wants to meet him and they say they'll play ball with him. But the disgrace is, so you're going to take other people's ideas and you don't even include them. It's such a male patriarchal move, number one. And number two, I don't remember signing anything that made you the king of me, the boss of me or anybody else in the black community. He is self-appointed advocate for the black community. You know, Malcolm X always said, don't trust black entertainers to be leaders in your community. And he was right. Because basically what we saw are these relationships. And then it, if you dug a little bit deeper, you would see that when Ice Cube did his basketball thing, that he wants to do some basketball league because he's, his intention, even beneath that, is how can I get as big as Jay-Z, right? So it's, it's all rich people's issues at this point. But anyway, he's underneath his partner is Jeff Quatnitz, who is best friends with Steve Bannon. And so there was a whole debacle months ago 
couple years, two years ago, 2018, something that was tied up with his money and his basketball franchise or whatever, mixed up with Jeff Klotnitz, Steve Bannon, Mike Flynn, and the Qatari nation. Okay, so we dig into that and go deeper. I put that out to expose that. Like what, you're, you're gonna say that this was just sort of this nebulous run in and Trump and them decided to, no, you have access. People, he had access. So basically, these are very transactional people in everything that they do. Trump, everybody, even Ice Cube, even all these rappers, they're transactional. Their relationships are transactional. Their friendships are transactional. And then they want to be like, this is for the good of black people. But the real killer in his contract with America was after we get all this stuff from white America and, and, they, and they pay back and they do all of these wonderful things for the community, we as black people had a responsibility and we need to keep our word too. That's why thus we had to sign this thing. There was one thing at the last paragraph towards the end that said that entertainers would be encouraged to produce positive music. I almost lost it. Like you put us through hell with your music in the 90s and God knows whenever. Your and you want to now kind of incite or infer a censorship? No. I was done with that. And it was just like crazy to positive music. Really? How much of you? How interesting. Who the hell does he think he is? So then old, old Big Head rolled up into it too, uh, 50 Cent, but not before Puffy stepped into the pool, but decided this pool is getting a little messed up, hot in here. I'm going to step out and say, I'm voting for Biden, but we'll all, I don't really believe in either side because what they're doing is, they divide the votes that way. The, there are people in our community that feel like my vote don't mean nothing. I ain't doing it. That's the same people who stopped voting and were not voting in the 80s or the 90s. Because I'd be very curious to find out if any of these rappers ever even voted, if they're even registered, number one. Nine times out of 10, they're usually not. That's the funniest thing of all. The people talking the most about it sometimes in the aren't even registered or just did it this year. So it's going to be really funny for me to see them. 50 Cent decided that he's going to leave town, leave the country. If, you know, he put up a picture of the tax of Joe Biden's tax because Joe Biden has said he will tax people who make over $400,000 a year. And hey, you know, I don't know many people who are having that conversation that it really bothers them, except the people who make over $400,000 a year. But only the people who make over $400,000, the people who are actually making like a billion or are really rolling it in, they haven't said, okay? So maybe, maybe, in, maybe, maybe 50 cents in that middle class era. I don't really know. So, and then, so if he wants to leave, it's fine. I just don't know another country that will take him. Isn't he a felon? Our felons, it's going to be really, but maybe he'll buy somebody off too, because these are transactional relationships. Then we had Charlemagne who keeps stirring the pot. You know, he's turned into the freaking bull um, with all because Joe Biden happened to say uh, that one time that you're not black if you don't vote for me or whatever. L excuse me, Charlemagne also said that Prince levitated in front of him or flew and, you know, anything to get ratings. So this is why Malcolm X was not too keen on black entertainers trying to front for the community for us and speaking for us. And Waka Flocka, a friend of mine said something today that I actually can't repeat. I almost want to, but I won't. But it's all yours, Aisha. 50 cents um, motto is get rich or die trying. Um, Nowhere in there does it say he cares about the community. They never he, care. Oh, he's sorry. Right. He's out for self. Okay. So that right there should tell people where it is. Um, Ice Cube, like Joe 
gave the breakdown of what what was up with Ice Cube. Um, here, here's the thing. Ice Cube would probably have rather the Biden Harris ticket took his plan, but you can't come up at this point and say, "Here's my plan. Do something with it." What were they supposed to do with it? They're not in office. One, two. Even if it's like, dude, we're waiting till we get elected, and we also have to have the House and Senate because Ice Cube doesn't know how the hell the government works, how you turn a plan into policy. Um, and also, too, when you read his plan, his plan has no policy positions in it. It's just, this needs to happen. Black people need to do this. Black people need to do this, or this needs to be done. It's, it's like it's like you would think that no one ever thought about these ideas before. It's like, dude, you know, <laughs> free, free breakfast program for in the that's the Black Panther Party. What are you trying? What are you talking about? Um, right. So it, it it just his contract with Black America. It's like, why? Why now? You could have had a contract with Black America during the Obi during the um, Obama Biden years. Why are you trying to do this? Doesn't make sense. And then um, Waka, look, Waka Flocka. Here's my here's my take. I don't trust any rapper who calls himself a whack rapper. He said he was whack, so that just tells you what kind of person he is. And his girlfriend Tammy, wife Tammy, whatever whatever she is to him. She's always up on Twitter defending him for something else. I know she was radio silent today. Um, and like I said, this is about weaponizing the black male vote and Trump is doing that. He's, he's trying to use these rappers because he only thinks that black men only relate to rappers. So, you know, and that, that rappers have the most influence over black men, period. Um, and the black men falling for it are stupid as hell because that tells you what he thinks about you. And um, these are the role models that are the, you know, the highest of the high in the black community. Yeah, it's all crime doing, or rappers, really. Exactly. exactly. So he's 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 going to uplift these people and best believe he reached out to these people. Okay. Oh. Best believe he reached out to these people. This 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 is no accident. And this is no. This is no. Um, no, Jared Kushner probably and, did. They reached out to people, and and then you got Puffy around here talking about he's starting his own political party. You know, get the hell out of here with but that. But for Ice and Cube, is, he didn't have to because right. Botnitz is friends with Steve Bannon. Right, but this is what gets that. This is what is pissing them off more than anything. This is why Trump was able to infiltrate black men, the and and their vote the way that he has because they're. Feelings. It, it's about that um, black male fragility, that that toxic black masculinity that is out there, and the fact that people keep saying black women will decide the election, and we will they don't they don't like hearing that it's not them carrying well, see, community. Well, anyway, that's another thing, too, because we forgot old stupid Kanye West. I mean, that's another one. But the He's reality on the ballot is, in Illinois, he was in our ballot, too, but as a vice president. So I don't get it. But anyway, you have Mitch McConnell, who wouldn't even pass these legislative measures that so many of our women have been out in the trenches with. And so the reason when they couldn't do it through the Obama era is because Obama wasn't looking for a bunch of sellouts to show up and get the handout. Because all these guys are doing is Trump said free, free pickings for everybody who's ready to flip over. That, that's what this is about. It's like there's a, it's the rich people's sale on being a freaking traitor to your own kind. And, you know, we're talking about each one of these men that are held in such high regard and esteem in America. And this is why America's in its place that it's in. 
they have all passed down the most heinous tropes that continue and continue in our own community. They've done a lot of harm in our own community with their stereotypes perpetuating stereotypical tropes. And the other, the new one is I'm a drug dealer. Now I'm a, me I'm a mogul. Oh, wow. You really came up, man. When was the last person, you know, and, and these people, you know, it, it, it's like pretty novel for that to happen. It, okay. But where are the scientists? Where are the doctors that you applaud? Where are the um, writers, the authors? We have a very sick community that is sick with its own sickness because how am I going to say uh, that it's gotten to the level where these guys who sold records exploiting their community think they can be, next thing you know, they'll be wanting, yeah, running for president. Where, how low of a bar are we gonna go? Are we gonna just dig, dig like a hole in the ground and just get rid of toilets, get rid of everything? Because this is not elevation. The only person we haven't heard from is Jay-Z, who, to be honest, I know why he's exactly where he is. Because he's smart. The rest of them aren't. They're, they, they went, and I'm pretty sure they will get paid for this. And, and this also goes back to what I said about them being in their feelings about Black women getting so much credit. Every last one of them is misogynistic to the 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 hilt. I mean, the way that Charlemagne the God talks about talks to black women. He had a legal women, case for like beating he, up a girl, right? Isn't that yeah, true? Yeah. And and okay, then so what, what but is beyond going that, on? But beyond that, if you just watch his Twitter behavior for like the last several years, he is like he's just nasty to women. Um, the worst thing Hillary Clinton ever did was go on his show. Don't legitimize yeah. these guys because they yeah. think we either had the black men or people who went to church, which some of us do, some of us don't. Or you get the other extreme. I'm from the street and I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm so over it. And then there are a bunch of outs. Yeah. And so, I mean, this just, this just showed a new side of ugly for these people it's like you know uh, they you know they 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 were they were from the streets now they have money and now they're doing what rich white people do they're doing what oppressed what people who were slave masters they do oppressed people oppress other people and then they try to tell you that what you're seeing isn't real. They all did that. And for me, it's pretty unforgivable because for them to go after a crime bill that all of their music being released around that time, the same time Joe Biden was giving that speech in 1994 about the predator. What was the number one record in America? The predator, Ice Cube's music, all of it. So you and the music before that. So they're not being held accountable either for creating an environment because whether they want to say it was, oh, we're just documenting, they got into it and they got in with the music industry guys. It's been brought out how it was used to oppress black people in those neighborhoods, the music. And they know that, but they don't want to talk about that. I saw straight out of come. Ice Cube didn't come from the streets. No, like he that. didn't. He, okay. he did not. <laughs> but he, but he, he sure wrote about it, right? Because it's always those ones that aren't from those things uh, that actually capitalize the most on it, and it's really unfortunate. So, what effect do you feel the Ice Cubes, the Fifty Cents, are going to have with the black male vote? Because we have to get rid of one thing, Doctor Vibe, a thing called image. 1980s and 1990s was about image building and creating this mirror, smoke screen, all of it. That's what Don, why Donald Trump appeals to my age group so much because we have these iconic people. But the minute you take the veil off of them, we have to strip them naked. 
because this is not the time. We are not even vibing on that level anymore. You're not a legend just because you live long. I'm sorry. I, where did that come from? Jill? You mean Aisha? Aisha, sorry, Aisha. Um, what, do you, what, what, do you, what effect do you think the, the the ice cubes and the 50 cents will have on the black male vote? Because I, and I hear what you're saying that it's black women that are going to be the key for the election, but I'm beginning to think black men because they're a little bit of a wild card and it doesn't, and 45 doesn't have to get a lot of their votes. He just has to get the right amount. Unless Biden is so far ahead, it's not going to make a difference. And I'm unless they're well, felons and they can't vote in their state well, at this point. But here's the, here's the thing. I won't be surprised if Trump gets maybe nine to 11% of the black male vote. I wouldn't be surprised. They but said he the, was up to 17. He, no, he's lying. But here's the thing. He, he's always lying. But here's the thing. Black women, black women have been on the ground, not just, not just voting, but we've been out there getting people to vote, getting people to the polls, getting, getting young black people who never registered to vote before, who never voted before, the people who haven't voted since 2008 or 2012, getting them back into the fold. Okay, so I think even though they might feel, um, you know, this whole, oh, well, we're going to show black women something or we're going to do, guess what? Black women are the ones who are still on the ground doing the doing a whole lot of work to, to just to up to increase the numbers. So you're going to see the you're going to see uh, the young black turnout um, like you haven't seen it before. And you've got some of them who don't know any better about party politics and and will and are still in their feelings about Bernie Sanders not being the one and not realizing that, guess what? He's not on the ticket. Trump is, and Trump is bad. And, and having your, um, having your uh, whatchamacallit vote does not bode well for black people. Um, having your protest vote does not bode well for black people no. in the end. It never has, because look where we are now when, when people did their protest vote for Jill Stein. Um, I think that, uh, like they said, that that uh, that family separation policy really got to some um, white women who were mothers in the suburbs. I think that 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 number might make up for some of the black men that will be lost. But also, too, we have to remember that people sat around and watched the George Floyd. People sat around and have watched what happened to family members over COVID. So these fools can act um, like the dummies that they are and jump the Trump train, but common sense people are coming to the table and will make up for their mistakes. I uh, One quick thing just before we go, I yep. just really feel that within the black community, this whole thing of pushing, you've got to be rich, you've got to have this, you've got to have that, and materialism, the consumerism and materialism in our, in our community is something that I think these idiots coming out, you know, that everything can be a transaction or to sell us out was really key because we're better than that. And we need people in banks. We need people in some economic areas that we look up to. We need to also believe that you don't have to be rich. This, this whole level of decency in our community, if these guys are people that you know they're looking up to, it's, it's, then it's a write-off, then that's fine. But that's not what women are looking for. That's not what people are looking for. It's just because you get the power doesn't mean that, you, that makes your character any better. And so when Biden was talking about the character of who we are, I think it's really important that you, we do emphasize having good character. Just because you sit and make a gazillion dollars doesn't mean that you actually are good at your job. 
because we know, I mean, for some people, yes, but like in a Trump situation, there's a lot of people that make a world work, that make a business work, that make everything work, but it has to be a reciprocal type of process. And I really do believe that that era of these iconic celebrities and that stuff is dwindling down. I look at like Beyonce is giving money and support to what's going on in Nigeria right now and, and the horrible things going on. They're so much more. And then to see what these guys, these men, and then I go and see a beautiful woman like her who doesn't say a lot, but puts her money where her mouth is. She freaking did. And, you know, but I haven't seen anything from the rest of them because they're all cut from the same cloth like Trump. So yeah, the women are setting the tone a bit, but some of the men are too, but we need to elevate those men. We need to get off of this. You need to turn your kids onto other things. This is old, this is done. It's from an era that's 30 years ago and I'm freaking old. So get move on. Even I'm ready for something new. I really, it, I didn't like it then. Okay. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I'll, I'll say this. Okay. Um, you know, um, they're all like, you know, as far as their careers have gone, they're like Drake started from the bottom. Now they're here. Yeah. But with activism, it doesn't work that way. You can't just come in at the top. OK, and I think that you're going to be able to push past all the people who have been working at the ground level, mobilizing folks. And you just come in at the top and think that you can get things done that way. No, you got to bring your behind in at the bottom or else it's not going to work. So all so these men thinking that they're going to be. Um, especially like Ice Cube thinking that he's going to be an activist. Did he think that he's going to be an activist because they're wealthy and they have connections? Um, nah, that's why the people aren't listening to you because you bypassed the people and went straight for your connections. You have to have the, you have to have the people behind you. Any Look, Barack Obama used to be a community activist. Any community activist will tell you that. You have to have the buy-in of the people behind you. Cube went in with this contract with Black America and had no buy-in from no, Black America. No, he heard $500 billion dollars and he said, hmm, what exactly. can I get from that? What exactly. about me? And of course, exactly. and also a humble person or really intelligent leadership, great leadership would know where they are not the expert on certain topics. That's it. The fact that no women were included in any of these processes speaks more about Trump's sexism and how women who are now being forced out of their careers in the moment because of COVID to go take care of children, we are going backwards, people, in this country. I don't want any one of them to open their mouths until they read Cast by Isabel Wilkins. Great book. Okay. All right. That is it. Told you it was going to be epic tonight. Told you. Told you, told you. Black media, yep, yep. Jill, thanks to COVID-19. I do believe people will see past Ice Cube and 25 plus 25. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Aisha, as well. And uh, as we come up to the election, we always have this question at the end of our conversations for the ladies. Who will be the next American president, 45 or Biden. Joe's going to be the next president. I think Biden, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think even Trump knows it because you could see the defeat in his face last night. And the more we put that out, it defeats him. It's like throwing water on the Wicked Witch of the West. You've okay. got to use your powers okay. of good. All right. Well, Jill Jones, how can people contact you? You can find me on Twitter at Jill D. Jones. And Aisha K. Staggers. And you can find me on Twitter at Aisha Staggers. I will be on there later for a little bit. All right. Well, ladies, thanks again for everything. I, I told people at the front end, this is going to be epic. I'm telling you, so people who ain't catching this, you're missing out big time. I am Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the Ordering Dr. Vibe Show, the home of epic conversations. I'm also the host of Epic Conversations. I am the 2000 and 
18 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethic Media Association. And also once a month, I host conversations for dads and fathers that are co-sponsored by Dove Men Care and Dad Central. I'd like to thank everyone who joined the conversation tonight. Uh, Real Dango, Black Beauty. Black Beauty has made his prediction that Biden-Harris is going to be the winning ticket. We will see. If you want to get in touch with me, it is if you're watching this on video, it's scrolling right now how you can get a hold of me. So anything else? And also give you my Twitter handle at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. As always, I end off my conversation with this. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith. Walk good. And we will see you next week because the ladies ain't going to stop. They're on fire. Good night, everybody.